first Indian residential schools started opening in the 1870s, it's the beginning of what some have called the darkest chapter in Canadian history. What took place in residential schools amounts to nothing short of cultural genocide. At the destruction of Indigenous culture and language and assimilation of Indigenous into European culture. Lynn's activism on freedom of speech and religion not only crushed her chances of competing in this world, but also strained her relationship with her father. He is still living in China after her parents divorced. After Lynn won the Miss World Canada competition, she says her father received threats from Chinese authorities. After her parents divorced. After her parents divorced. Okay, so uh, uh, here's the BBC repeating this lie that over a million Uyghurs have been detained. There is absolutely no evidence at all uh, suggesting that there is no evidence of any kind of genocide, not an actual genocide, which is what the Western media wants you to think is happening. Uh, but if you scrutinize them, they will fall back to claiming it is a cultural genocide where they say the Chinese government is erasing Uyghur language, their, their way of practicing practicing Islam, their dance, their food, everything. Everything is being erased. This is what they claim. Uh, so keep that in mind as we watch this, this. This whole video is about this woman who they depict as having fled from China, who they claim is erasing Uyghur culture, and it's like this, this last dying fire in the UK, this, this woman and the people around her keeping the, the last bit of Uyghur culture alive. Keep that in mind because that's what this documentary is. An intense exchange this morning between the Federal Foreign Affairs Minister and Ontario MP Michael Chong in Ottawa. It comes the same day as China's ambassador to Canada has been summoned. Chong says China was threatening him and his family abroad, oh, according to information from Canada's spy agency CSIS. A Chinese diplomat in Toronto has been identified as being part of the plot to intimidate him. Melanie Jolie says Ottawa might expel some Chinese diplomats. It's just the latest in a string of events tied to Chinese political interference. The Prime Minister's brother made a rare appearance on Parliament Hill yesterday. Alexander Trudeau testified about a donation from China made to the foundation that bears his father's name. Glenn McGregor reports. The Prime Minister's younger brother made a rare step onto the public stage. Alexander Trudeau came before a parliamentary committee to defend the organization named for their father. The Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation has not been a part of any foreign interference attempts. At issue, $140,000 in donations from Chinese billionaires that he signed for on behalf of the foundation in 2015. Money, the opposition charges, that was intended to win favor with his brother's government. That's quite a deal for $140,000, I'd say that they were both able to, to access uh, the Prime Minister. Trudeau said the money was for scholarships, and he denied speaking with his brother about the donations or the foundation. I'm one of the few adult people in this country who can offer him a world outside of politics. Earlier, Justin Trudeau was responding to other allegations that he didn't warn Conservative MP Michael Chong that his family had been targeted by a Chinese diplomat over his 2021 motion denouncing the treatment of Chinese minority groups. Mr. Speaker, I vote for the motion. Trudeau said he learned only this week from Canada's spy agency about a threat to retaliate against Chong's relatives in Hong Kong. CSIS made the determination that it wasn't something that needed to be raised to a higher level because it wasn't a significant enough concern. Not good enough, says Chong is the government did nothing about a person in Canada that was targeting me and my family and targeting other MPs. And that is an appalling lack of leadership. The Conservatives are demanding the diplomat from the Toronto Consulate be expelled. Any other Canadian had done this, they'd be charged and in jail, but because the Prime Minister has given diplomatic immunity and credentials to this agent, he's able to act with impunity. I'm afraid the Conservative leader is inventing the laws around diplomatic immunity. Sanctions that diplomat, but the Prime Minister says he expects CSIS to warn MPs of any attempts by foreign actors to influence their work. Toronto Independent MP Kevin Vuong says he met with CSIS 
and is now claiming he was a victim of Chinese interference in the 2021 election. Luang was dropped as a liberal candidate after it emerged he did not reveal a withdrawn sexual assault charge. All of the pieces have really fallen in place to really explain what didn't previously make sense to me back in September of 2021. Why, you know, magically this the false allegation against me would emerge just days before the election um, and and ultimately what their aim was what i knew at the time was it was some sort of agenda i just didn't know who whose it was and it's clear now it was not just political but it was a very nefarious agenda Vuong says he believes he was targeted because his riding is home to many Chinese Canadians and he was not sympathetic to Beijing's agenda. Vuong also paid a $500 fine for failing to disclose the withdrawn charge to the Royal Canadian Navy, where he's a reservist. Russia launched a wave of... The Prime Minister's brother made a rare appearance on Parliament Hill today. Alexandre Trudeau testified about a donation from China made to the foundation that bears his father's name. It comes as Justin Trudeau was also facing questions about threats from China against the family of a Canadian MP. CTV's senior political correspondent Glenn McGregor reports. The Prime Minister's younger brother made a rare step onto the public stage. Alexandre Trudeau came before a parliamentary committee to defend the organization named for their father. The Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation has not been a part of any foreign interference attempts. At issue, $140,000 in donations from Chinese billionaires that he signed for on behalf of the foundation in 2015. Money, the opposition charges, that was intended to win favor with his brother's government. That's quite a deal for $140,000, I'd say that they were both able to to access uh, the Prime Minister. Trudeau said the money was for scholarships, and he denied speaking with his brother about the donations or the foundation. I'm one of the few adult people in this country who can offer him a world outside of politics. Earlier today, Justin Trudeau was responding to other allegations that he didn't warn Conservative MP Michael Chong that his family had been targeted by a Chinese diplomat over his 2021 motion denouncing the treatment of Chinese minority groups. Mr. Speaker, I vote for the motion. Trudeau said he learned only this week from Canada's spy agency about a threat to retaliate against Chong's relatives in Hong Kong. CSIS made the determination that it wasn't something that needed to be raised to a higher level because it wasn't a significant enough concern. Not good enough, says Chong is the government did nothing about a person in Canada that was targeting me and my family and targeting other Shit. MPs. And that is an appalling lack of leadership. The Conservatives are demanding the diplomat from the Toronto Consulate be expelled. Any other Canadian had done this, they'd be charged and in jail, but because the Prime Minister has given diplomatic immunity and credentials to this agent, he's able to act, act with impunity. I'm afraid the Conservative leader is inventing the laws around diplomatic immunities. So far, the government has not sanctioned that diplomat, but the Prime Minister says he expects CSIS to warn MPs of any attempts by foreign actors to influence their work. Omar. All right, CTV's Glenn McGregor tonight in Ottawa, where the Canadian delegation that will attend this weekend's coronation was revealed. The Prime Minister and Sophie Crégoire Trudeau will be in attendance along with the Governor-General. Indigenous leaders.